Share my screen again. <laughs> right now, there she is. <laughs> I think she reads my aura. She's <laughs> oh my. Okay. I'm good then, just a few more minutes. Um, just so they're not, I feel like it's better for them to be sitting in the waiting room than sitting and staring at you guys. <laughs> Can you tell how many people there are? There are six people in there right now. And seven, another one just joins. Go ahead and start letting everyone in. Okay, hi everybody. Um, welcome to this info session on guided discovery, um, Guilford College's um, program. We're gonna talk to you a little bit about what guided discovery is and um, we're, we'll start with introductions. Um, my name is Katherine Shields and I'm an Associate Academic Dean at Guilford College. Um, I've been at Guilford for about um, 13 years 
and I um, am really happy to welcome you all here to talk about guided discovery. Along with me tonight are two of our Guilford, two of our Guilford guides, two of our wonderful Guilford guides, Stephen Fales, there's Stephen, and Molly Blafer. And they're going to talk to you a little bit about the work that they do in guided discovery, the work that they, um, you know, the work that they do with students and what our program is about. And I'm going to begin um, by giving you an introduction to the, the program and what we are hoping to do with guided discovery, how, what we feel like it's offering to students and what it's offering to the college. So um, guided discovery is a, one of the key parts of the Guilford Edge, which you may have heard of. And the Guilford Edge consists of four different components and they are um, teaming for success, learning collaboratively, <clears throat> rallying campus spirit, and ethical leadership. And, and guided discovery, we really feel like we, well, we do, we bridge together two, especially of those points. And those are teaming for success and learning collaboratively. So our program is a team-based advising program and it pulls together um, both academic and career advising. It's an integrated advising program. And we also, in addition to this team-based advising, we really work closely with students um, as they're getting to know our curriculum and as they're beginning to plan their academic journey at Guilford. And um, we also teach in a key component of our curriculum. The three parts of our curriculum are the critical bases, the study in the majors, and the collaborative quest, which is a personalized designed um, part of the curriculum that students uh, work with their guides and their faculty members to help design. Um, we can talk more about that later if you all have questions about it. Um, but for now, I wanna let you know that we really um, support students by helping them to identify, plan, and achieve their personal and professional goals. Um, as I mentioned, Guided Discovery is a team-based advising program, and it covers all four years of a, Gil of a Guilford student's education and even beyond that. Um, Molly and Steve are going to talk a little bit more about the details related to the, that time um, during a student's um, time at Guilford. Um, we also wanted to let you know that the, there is a um, support team that actually works with each student, again, to help them to identify um, what they want to do and help them to do it. Um, students work closely with Guilford Guides to, uh, to build that team and to eventually become the leader of that team. So um, our program, and you can go back um, one, Molly, please, actually, this is um, where um, Stephen and Molly will start. So we'll just keep it there. This is a, a picture of our team and um, Stephen and Molly are gonna talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, I just wanted to also mention that, um, again, with this team-based advising, we're really uh, looking, for, looking to help students to succeed while they're students, to prepare for what comes after Guilford and to, uh, to identify and achieve their goals along the way. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Molly and Steven to share some more of the details about the work that we do in Guided Discovery. And then at the end of that, we'll have time to take questions. Um, and we do ask that you um, load those into the chat and we'll get to those as soon as uh, Stephen and Molly get through our info portion of the presentation. Awesome. So like Catherine said, my name is Molly. I'm one of the Guilford Guides. Um, also presenting with us today is Stephen Fales. Um, so we're in that picture along with the rest of our staff. And as you can see, there's quite a few of us and we're all dedicated to helping you succeed, especially as you first come into Guilford. So we have eight guides who are focused on academic um, advising. And then we have four guides who are focused on career advising. But it's really important that you know that we look at ourselves as a holistic office, which means we're not going to help you with just one thing or the other. We're going to help you with anything that is going to gear you towards success. So that means if you come to talk to me as your academic advisor, but you have some concerns about what types of jobs you might want in the future, 
I'm not going to say, okay, you can't talk to me, move on to the next person. The point is, is that we're all here to support you. So I might pull Steven in to help in that conversation because as he's a career guide, but I absolutely am there for that as well. Um, so like I said, there's 12 of us in total. Later in the presentation, you'll hear about how you're assigned to us, um, but we're all here to do integrated academic and career advising. So if you come in and you know exactly what you wanna do, or if you come in and you have no idea what you're gonna do, we can all help support those decisions. And on the next slide, Stephen will talk a little bit about the types of um, things we do with you in those appointments. Okay, so hey everybody, again, my name is Stephen Fails. Um, <clears throat> I am <clears throat> one of a team of 12 guides. I work on the career advising side and I will make a little bit more sense <clears throat> um, of that um, in just a little bit. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of get you started and helping you to understand what exactly it is that we do. And, and the truth is we do a lot. <laughs> we do a number of different things. We offer a lot of different types of support, um, <clears throat> but there are five critical areas uh, that we like to focus in on. The first is advising. So um, most of you are probably familiar with advising. Um, you know, wherever you're in school now, you probably have a guidance counselor or there might be a teacher that you go to and confide in who helps you get things worked out. Um, so when you come to Guilford, there, there's a dedicated core, that's us, <clears throat> of people who are there strictly for the purpose of advising. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to advising, we have split it into two different domains. Um, even though, as Molly stated before, the domains work hand in hand uh, to try to help you create <clears throat> what we like to term, you know, um, a holistic experience. It's going to help you progress and get where you want to go. So there's an advising side um, that's related to academics, and then there's an advising side that's related to career-oriented um, concerns, uh, questions, interests, so on and so forth. So when it comes to the academic side of things, it's pretty much what you would expect. Those guides are there to help you with registration. Um, they're there to help you with questions about classes, um, about course sequencing, um, or maybe you're not quite sure where you wanna be yet. And so they will talk to you and help you explore the interests that you might carry. Um, because who knows, you might wanna be an engineer on this hand and wanna be a visual artist on the other. Um, so they're there to help you understand um, the best courses and essentially uh, the best major or majors, minor or minors, um, that will help you achieve the goals and meet your interests. Um, <clears throat> on the other side of things, we have the career guides. Career guides have a slightly different, um, a slightly different task, and that is to kind of help you map what it is that you plan to do with yourself post graduation. Now, even though we're helping you figure out what you're going to do after graduation, it doesn't mean that we wait until your last year to start. We start as soon as you arrive. Um, and the idea is to help you make sure that you are able to solidify, develop and solidify your plan um, throughout this time that you're with, uh, with us at Guilford. So we also do a lot of conversations related to um, exploration. Um, a lot of the times students come in, they start in one place thinking they wanna do this when they graduate and they wind up somewhere else thinking they wanna do that. And they have questions about how they get from point A to point B. Um, how do I transition from this interest to that interest, from that aspiration to this aspiration? So we will have lots of conversations with you um, about where it is that you want to go, what it is you want to do. Um, for some of you, that will start with conversations about school after school. So a lot of you will look to go into master's programs. You might look to go to um, a professional school to obtain a law degree or a medical degree of some sort. Um, some of you might look to enter into the military so we can have conversations with you about that. Um, others of you might be looking to just go straight to work. So we have those conversations with you as well. Um, at some point in time, uh, probably a little sooner than later in the time that you're at Guilford, you will start to hear the term internship. Um, we are there to have conversations with you about internships, what internships are, um, and the resources that you can utilize to try to locate internships that are relevant to your courses of study and your future uh, career aspirations and goals. Um, and then um, we also will help students try to get you know, um, job searches figured out. So offering the resources for that, everything from um, resumes, cover letters, personal statements, uh, to interviewing um, practice, to um, the actual search itself, the different engines that are out there and the different methods and techniques that you can utilize um, to try to find um, work post-graduation post or maybe even while you're still in school because we have a lot of students that also work while they're in school. Um, 
one of the next things that we do is we teach. Um, so all 12 of us are responsible for teaching um, a course enti entitled Reflection Seminar 1, or you will hear it colloquially termed RS1. Um, and that, that course is exactly what it sounds like. It's there to help students better acclimate themselves to the collegiate environment. Um, we have a number of prescribed assignments and activities that we will utilize. And the, the goal is to help you um, kind of identify uh, your own path to self-actualization and development. Um, so while we all bear different teaching styles and approaches, essentially what we're all trying to do is help you to better understand who you are, maybe who you're not, what you are, what you're not, um, and who and what you're trying to become. Um, that's the goal of that course. There are also RS2 and RS3 courses that are part of the Collaborative Quest, and they are continuations, um, purposed a little differently, but continuations no less from the RS1 course uh, that we will all instruct. Um, next is programming. So programming is a big deal in any collegiate space. Um, programming is anything from, you know, as a career guide, we might want to help you with some soft skills development. So we'll have a program for that. Or it can be uh, one of the student organizations who is having something uh, for fun. <clears throat> um, we have a lot of different types of programming and a lot of programming that happens throughout the course of the year. And from God at Discovery, what we like to do is find ways to team with other campus partners and see what we can do to support those efforts and make sure that those programs are um, one, connecting all of, our, um, all of our goals and two, actually enriching students uh, and entertaining students and um, providing the experience for you that college is uh, known to provide. Um, <clears throat> uh, we also, at least, at least in the next point, work collaboratively with a lot of different entities on campus. Um, and the idea um, behind collaboration is what you will find at Guilford, um, a very tight knit community. It's a very tight knit community. So the idea is um, kind of like, this might be, might be a little bit before everyone's time, but the show cheers. You know, if you walked in, everybody knows your name. It's kind of the idea. We want to make sure that people know your name um, from one space to the next. And what happens um, as a result is uh, when people see you coming, um, <clears throat> they know, number one, to be looking for you. And number two, they've already gone ahead and set themselves um, on being concerned with whatever it is your concerns are. Um, as long as, you know, there are no rules or regulations or policies that limit our abilities to communicate certain types of information. Um, a lot of times we've had collaborative um, conversations uh, about students, regarding students, issues, concerns, um, so we can try to support you in different spaces and in different ways on campus because there are different spaces who are uh, purposed for different things. Um, and lastly, there is networking. So networking becomes a really big deal, especially as you move towards the end of your collegiate career, but learning how to network starts as soon as you arrive. And so that kind of goes back to um, our collabor uh, collaborating point as well. Um, one of the things that you're going to learn how to do that will, that will be most critical to you is collaborate um, with other people. Um, and ideally, people who are not like you, uh, who don't necessarily share your interests, um, finding ways to converge your interests and achieve common goals. Um, so when it comes to networking, um, a lot of that happens from the career side. Uh, and it, it's kind of a, it's an attempt to make sure that you have the connections that you need to be able to move forward. So sometimes it's connecting you with Guilford alums, sometimes it's connecting you with community partners. Um, it could be both. Um, or again, just teaching you about the process of learning how to build a network and the importance of having a network um, so that if plan A falls through, there's a plan B. If there's no plan B, there's a plan C. If there's not a plan C, maybe there's a plan C plus. Um, but there's always somewhere to go. Um, and someone to, that you have on your side who's going to help you get things figured out. So believe it or not, that's the short about what it is that we do. Um, next slide, please. Great, thank you. So um, I know a lot of you probably have questions um, about these pathways. What are these pathways? Um, so the pathways idea uh, was birthed in guided discovery probably about a year and a half ago. Um, and we came up with this idea to try to group majors um, based upon uh, the trends and the patterns that we had seen with regard to the way students uh, double major or change majors. Um, and then as you can also see, or as you have probably seen, um, a lot of these majors kind of go hand in hand when it comes to the content uh, and the subject matter. 
So when it comes to pathways, it gave us a way to kind of organize, but not just organize, but to better understand who students are already, what they are already, and kind of the directions that they want to go, what it is, uh, what it is that students aspire to do. Um, so there are four pathways, the first being social and linguistic science. Um, that is the pathway that I'm assigned to and the pathway that Molly is assigned to. So I'm giving this presentation with my pathway part. Um, and then there's pathway two, um, which is our artistic and human, science, uh, human studies pathway, pathway three, um, which is our natural science studies and pathway four, which is management, math and technology. So what we try to do there is kind of cover all the bases. Um, I know Catherine's on, she loves the term buckets. Um, <laughs> we like to, we like to kind of term this as dumping different things into certain buckets. Um, but the good thing about coming to an institution um, like Guilford College and that, it being, and that it is a, a liberal arts institution is that um, you're gonna get a little bit of everything. Now, students have asked the question for ages. Why do I need to know this thing when I wanna be that? <laughs> um, and there's a short answer for that, and it is this. Um, you never know when having a diverse pool of knowledge will come into play. And one of the things that we emphasize very strongly at Guilford is having the versatility in your knowledge base and your skill base to be able to move from one area to an area that seems to be completely disconnected. Um, we live in a day and time, and, and if there's ever a time that we, we've been able to observe it, it's right now. Uh, and, and these times that seem to be very perilous and uncertain. Um, it is absolutely essential that you bear different types of knowledge and that you are able to uh, transfer and transform skills from one space um, and from one type and from one domain to another. Um, it's important that you might know as a history major how to become an instructional technologist or as an individual who studies sustainable food systems, um, it might be important for you to understand the inner workings of uh, domestic economics and business, right? Um, because food is a multi-billion dollar business. So it's all interrelated and interconnected. And that is something that we attempt to emphasize as you all choose your majors and your minors and studying your different areas. Um, we want you to understand the importance of bearing different types of knowledge. Um, so in a nutshell, that is pathways. Um, there's probably going to be a little more information forthcoming about pathways, but um, all of the majors do fall into a pathway. Um, and we'll get a little bit more into that. I'm sure there are going to be some questions about that. So I'll wait. I'm going to pass the mic back to Molly. <laughs> sure. Um, so if you could go to the next slide. All right. So this is a visual representation of how you'll come into contact with not only the academic and the career guides like we've already talked about, but some really other important people who are gonna be a part of your team. So like Stephen just was talking about, there are pathways and you will choose one, but that's not gonna limit you to what you experience at Guilford College. So say you choose pathway one, then your academic guide will be me and your career guide will be Stephen. So as you can see, you start with your academic guide and in the first two years, we're really heavily involved. And that's because no matter what you end up majoring in, there's a lot of requirements, no matter what college you go to, that you need to focus on fulfilling before you even jump into your major. And so in your first year, we're really gonna focus on meeting some of those requirements. And that's why it's okay if the pathway you choose doesn't end up being what you major in. Um, it's just a place for you to really get started and know that you have an advisor who's familiar with those areas, that way they can help you but they can also help talk you through why maybe this isn't the best fit for you. So like I said, as you can see those first two years, your academic advisor and you become really close. You talk a lot of touch points throughout the semesters and you really get to know each other so that we can help you make those decisions. Your career advisor, you're connected to them from the beginning as well. Like Steven said, even though it's meant to help you with things post-college, you start developing those skills really early on. Something you learn in your first semester of college could stick with you and be something that ends up going on your resume. So we start your career guide from the beginning, that way you get to know them. But as you get closer to graduation, so probably in your third and fourth year, you'll really up your interactions with them as you're probably needing multiple resumes worked on, multiple interviews and things like that. But some really other cool factors that you can see in this visual is that right away, you'll also be connected with a peer mentor. So in that first class that Steven mentioned, which is called Reflection Seminar One, 
your class will also have a peer mentor who is a current student. So that means they'll either already be in their second or third year of college. And so they're really there to help support you. So maybe you have some questions about Guilford that you don't necessarily want to ask a staff member, even though we try to be approachable. You know, there's some things that you just rather ask another student who's lived through it. That peer mentor will be in your reflection seminar class, but they'll also be available for you to email or get together with on campus. So that's a really important part of the team that we like students to know about is you'll have someone who knows exactly what it's like to have to get to the dining hall and then get to your next class, maybe a little bit more than Steven or I do, even though you will see us in the dining hall. But yeah, we have peer mentors for you. That way you have a student who can walk you through what day-to-day -day life looks like at Guilford. We also have faculty advisors on here because at some point you will transition out of your academic guide and into a faculty advisor. And when we say transition out, we don't mean that we'll never be able to talk to you again or have meetings. We absolutely will stay connected to you. However, we wanna make sure that you get connected to a faculty advisor because that will be someone who's in your major and can really show you the ropes in depth about the classes you're taking. And they're the people who have gone to school for that discipline. So we really think it's important for you to start building relationships with them. There'll be people that help you make decisions about your classes, but also some decisions alongside your career guide when you're looking for internships or different networking opportunities. And then the last part of this um, puzzle, I guess, of your team is the alumni and constituent support. Just like Steven said, there are so many external factors to being at Guilford that come along with being um, a student here. So you have all the alumni who have already graduated from Guilford and they're out in whatever field you might be interested in. We have so many of them who reach out to us asking how they can help current students as well as vice versa, us reaching out and seeing what opportunities there are. So there's alumni who are gonna be in the Greensboro area, but there's also alumni that could be in California that wanna give advice to a current, a current student who was in the same shoes as them. Um, and then additionally, we have a lot of community partners, so places right here in Greensboro and across the country that want to host internships and help you get some experiences that you'll eventually be able to, to market yourself with. So this graphic hopefully shows you that throughout your time at Guilford, you're going to have multiple people who are here to help you. Um, and just because you might be in a dotted line or a a solid line that doesn't mean that the rest of the people go away. We're all here for you throughout your time at Guilford. Um, the, the solid lines just show you who you know that will have kind of that in-depth knowledge at that time for you. All right, so I think we can go to the next slide. All right, so something that a lot of you probably have already heard about and may have a lot of questions about is the structure of our semesters here at Guilford. Um, and I think it's important that in Guided Discovery's presentation, we explain this because like we've been saying, we are the people that are there for you more than just what classes are you taking and career-wise. We're also there to make sure that you're doing okay and adjusting well. And so a big part of that is managing what your day-to-day -day looks like when you come to Guilford. So when you come to Guilford, the beginning of the term is gonna be separated into a three-week session and then a 12-week session. And on the graph, you can see some differences. So during the three-week session, you're gonna take one class and you're gonna to go to that every day. And so when you're in that one class every day, that gives you a chance to get to know the cohort of students that you're with, the professor you're with, and really take some time to look at a subject more in depth. When it comes to your first year, you're all gonna be in the same class called Initiate. And this is a perfect opportunity, like Steven said, about learning how to work interdisciplinary. So it's not a class that's about one subject or another. It's four different professors from different areas of campus all coming together to help you look at um, different problems, different ideas about who you are, there's a whole range of different things that you'll take out of this class, but mostly it's a chance for you to get used to being in the college setting, what it means to be a college student, and having that opportunity to interact with professors and other, and other students. Catherine is actually someone who's taught in initiate section, so when we move to the questions, if you have any specifics, I'm sure she can answer as well. But like the chart says, you meet every class day. It's about three hours. You'll know before 
the semester if you're in the morning time or the afternoon time. And the three hours sounds like a lot, but I guarantee you it's not just sitting in lecture. It gives you time to actually do activities with your professors. Some students actually went on field trips out into the Greensboro community. I'm pretty sure Catherine's class, they got to go out and go to a different museum downtown. So it's a long amount of time, but that gives you a lot of um, room for activities and in-depth application of what you're learning. And so the bonus of this is even though students will either be in a morning or afternoon session, there is some time in the middle of the day reserved where there's no classes and that's called collaborative time. That way, if there's any big events going on on campus, club meetings, things like that, there's some time for you to all come together. So that's what the three week looks like. Once that's completed, you finish an entire college course and then you move on to your 12 week. During your 12 week, you're gonna have three classes functioning within the same time. So that might be a little bit more typical of what you think of when you think of a college schedule. So these classes could meet two or three times a week. So possibly on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Um, sometimes something a little different like a Monday, Wednesday if it's a longer class. So these classes rotate around each other. So maybe you have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 to 9.45 class, and that's your English class, and you go to that, and then Tuesday and Thursdays, you go to your, your science class from one to three. Um, so this is where we come in a lot, is helping students manage their time and kind of handle the different courses because you're doing them at the same time. Um, so it's a bit different than your three week, but it does give you a bit of variety as well in your in your day to day. Um, and even though your schedule might look a little different, there always is that collaborative time during the week in the 12, 12 week session as well. Um, so I know that's a lot to take in. We'll definitely answer any questions you have, but for now, the biggest thing you need to know is that there's two parts of the semester. In the three week, you take one class, the 12 week, you take three classes, and we're here to support you while you're figuring out how that all works for your, for your schedule. All right, I'm gonna hand it back to Steven and we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so as we are all learning um, minute by minute right now, um, <laughs> electronic messaging is a really, 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 really big deal. Um, Guided Discovery releases a monthly newsletter. Um, this new newsletter has a lot of different types of information in it. <clears throat> um, of course, you know, we know that students will get a lot of different things that come to them via email or in other ways electronically. Um, but we humbly request <laughs> that you lay a very critical eye on this newsletter um, as we offer a lot of pertinent information coming from our department and a lot of the times from across the campus uh, to students in this method. So you might learn anything from adjustments to drop-in hours to different types of courses that are going to be offered or maybe not gonna be offered um, to different types of programming that might be happening on campus or opportunities uh, that students will have a chance to partake in that are not on campus. Um, there are a lot of different types of information that come through our monthly newsletter, but it's most certainly there to make sure that students are as informed as possible. Um, it's usually very well designed. I am not one of the designers of this letter, but the guys who do design this letter do an outstanding job. Um, so <laughs> hopefully it will catch your eye um, and offer you um, all the information that you need, or uh, if not all the information that you need, it'll at least get you going. And um, there's a possibility that um, there might be some information that slipped through the cracks somewhere else uh, that you're able to catch in this letter. So we strongly encourage a habit of going ahead now and beginning to very closely uh, study your email correspondence. Um, obviously, we are all doing everything electronically right now, as stated before. So it is most certainly um, in your best interest to, to keep an eye out for all of the different types of correspondence uh, that will be coming through, but we want you to, to pay close and special attention to this guy to discover, uh, the Guide to Discovery Monthly Newsletter. Um, there are questions I think that will be able to be answered um, probably in correspondence like this. A lot of the times the questions that students have, um, there will be answers to um, in this type of information. So um, as you've probably heard your entire life, reading is fundamental um, and you don't wanna miss this letter when it comes out. Um, and I think we can take it to the next slide. I think that's the question slide. Okay, so 
Are there questions? We are ready for your questions. So we had two questions um, that, that we received earlier today. And I will start with, um, what if you're interested in different majors that are listed under more than one pathway? Awesome, so I can take that one. Um, first, that's totally fine. If anything, that's great. Um, it's okay to have multiple interests that don't fit into the same pathway. If anything, we encourage that, like you've been hearing us saying, it's really great if you can um, bring together things that don't really seem like they go together and find ways for them to mesh up. Um, really, the only thing that comes into play in terms of which pathway you should pick depends on if one of those majors is something where it's really important that you get certain classes in a certain order. And so when you get the email from um, admissions about going on to something called Canvas, it's a website that we use to do some orientation prep. There's gonna be a survey for you to fill out um, information about the types of classes you wanna take and then advisors will make your schedules for you. So on there, it will ask you to pick a pathway so pick the one of the major, if you have one, that you're like really, really sure that's something you want to learn more about. And then there will be another question that asks if you have, um, there's a list of majors. And if you are interested in any of those, we'll ask you to click the checkbox just so we know. And if we have to get you into any classes earlier, like say biology, then we'll know that. And even if you're in pathway one, which is not the, not the natural science, but you end up clicking something that needs an intro class, we'll, we'll have that information and be able to get you sorted. So I don't want anyone to feel like the pathways are um, limiting you. It's just kind of a home base for you to have an advisor that can work with you, but we absolutely can collaborate with other guides. Um, and we're all trained to be able to help students no matter what their major is. So it's okay if you have multiple. I have students that have three majors that are all in my pathway. And then I have students who are double majors, one in my pathway, one in another. Um, so don't feel too much pressure. Whichever pathway you pick will get you sorted. One thing I wanna add, we mentioned, I think you probably heard from all three of us that uh, the, the, the team in Guided Discovery sees itself as a team. We see um, our work as um, we, we rely on each other um, in the department. And so there's a lot of collaboration from one guide to another. Um, and there's a lot of collaboration across campus that is pulled together in our department. Um, so, you know, the, majoring in uh, pathways that are, um, you know, not the same pathway. It's, it happens a lot. And we just, um, we work together to get the students the support that they need. Okay, the next question is, how will Guilford Guides help us navigate our interests? Yeah, so um, I think the name of our game <laughs> is helping you navigate your interests. Um, that starts very early on. And uh, what we will likely do um, first and foremost is get you to tell us what your interests are. And then we will uh, make an effort to help you narrow down um, as a means of prioritization which of those interests you are interested um, in trying to cater to uh, primarily, and then seeing how those interests align with courses that you're taking, uh, the major or majors, minor or minors that you selected. Um, a lot of those types of conversations are very, very natural. Um, they can be structured. So they might be like uh, MBTI, or we have a, a platform that we utilize called Pathway U. Um, there are different types of assessments that we have that we offer you that um, kind of gauge your interests, your preferences, your strengths. Um, so those types of characteristics, um, we can do it that way. Um, it can be a lot. It can be a lot less formal. Um, I'm a big fan of scenario, so I might give you scenario-based questions. Um, and what it does is it kind of helps me gauge uh, what your mindset is. Uh, if you're a student who's looking to go into medical science, um, I might ask you a question that's going to help me understand whether you're the type of person who wants to be, you know, conducting the surgery. If you're the individual who wants to be an administrator in a medical facility who sets up the surgeries, or if you're an individual who wants to be selling the equipment that physicians use to conduct the surgeries. Um, there's a lot of different angles um, on interest. And so we have those types of conversations as often as possible um, and as often as needed, as in depth as possible um, and as needed to ensure 
that we do the best that we can to cover uh, the breadth of your interests and uh, full comprehension and then do the best that we can to um, apply whatever measures and methods are necessary to make sure that you are exploring those actively for yourself in the educational environment. Yeah, and I would just add on, there's also built in opportunities within college that are gonna help you figure out your interests. And I think a big thing that I like to talk through students with are those first classes that you're taking. A lot of them are gonna be intro level courses to all different subjects. And you're taking them because they fulfill requirements that you need to take but they also might end up being something that you really enjoy. So I've had students who never even heard of the word sociology, take an intro to sociology class and then come and wanna talk about it. And that's been a really awesome part of this program is that we're not just here to answer specific questions. We have students come in who just wanna chat about their experience on campus. And the more that we get to know you as an individual, the more we can point out different opportunities for guest speakers on campus that you might find interesting for different clubs that have events going on. So I think it's really awesome that we get the chance to build relationships with one another because believe it or not, we hear things that you say sometimes that you don't even realize you're creating a pattern of things you're interested in. And so I think it's really great if you wanna come and talk to your guide just about how things are going on campus and they might be able to fill in some puzzle pieces for you of different opportunities. Todd, one more thing. Um, you know, Stephen men mentioned, Molly and Stephen both mentioned the classes that you'll take. And um, when you, the, the, first sem the first semester that you're here, you'll take two classes, the paired class initiate an RS1 that um, that they mentioned. So that reflection seminar class is really very geared towards asking those questions in a structured way um, that that Stephen and Molly were talking about. And you'll do that throughout your time at Guilford. Part of the um, the process of reflection is really important as a Quaker founded institution. Um, the idea that um, being thoughtful, taking time, reflecting planning, all of those things are very important and that they, they're really fostered through a lot of the classes and a lot of the experiences that you'll have. And then like they're both indicating, there are informal questions that you might have that you, that just arise and they're, that, you know, they're, your guides will be there to talk you through those things as well. But I think Stephen made a really good point that that's really all, that's our whole reason for being. Okay, the next question, if I wanted to major in special education, how would I go about that? Molly, do you? So the education major is in Pathway 2, so that's definitely where I would say to get started. Um, you'll work with your guide specifically on any intro classes that you may need, and there are um, a lot of different options when it comes to education. So I would say right now, while you're, you're waiting to get started at Guilford, you can already use the resources we have online, such as the catalog. Um, and feel free to reach out to Guided Discovery if you want to set up an appointment with one of us even before you come to kind of walk you through it. But that will basically show you all the different options within the education major. So if you're looking at doing um, elementary education versus high school education, if you're looking at doing special education and history or something like that, um, there's lots of different options and combinations and ways to get certified. Um, so there's education and then there's also all the certification parts of it that come with it. Um, and so I would say you could already get started looking on our online catalog and information there, but your pathway to guide in that case would help walk you through what types of things you need to know to get specialized in um, special education. I'll, okay. I'll add on to that just okay. a little bit. Um, I think we have a lot of questions that come from students um, in particular about education. And um, <laughs> the thing that I tell students about education is, hey, listen, um, most school systems are not turning away teachers. <laughs> so um, <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. Um, it may be the case that a particular certification or specialization area you're looking to go into, Guilford does not offer. However, um, what Guilford does offer are minors. Um, so any given subject matter can be related 
to something that you're looking to do. For example, if you want to be a special education teacher and you find there's no special education uh, specialization, well, we, we have psychology. So you minor in psychology and you begin to build a foundation. Um, the way that it works is from one state to the next, each state has its own requirements for being a teacher. And what you'll want to do is to uh, go to whatever that state's website is uh, for, for teachers, for teacher education for North Carolina, it's NC, uh, NCDPI, I used to be a teacher. Um, and you wanna look up the requirements um, <clears throat> that are posted or prescribed there for people who wanna go into education for the different certifications that, and that type of thing and see how they outline the pathways to certification and then align that with your collegiate experience. If you're looking to go into education, it's actually very important that you go ahead and do that now. Um, it's not one of those things that you wanna get caught off guard with in year three or four, um, especially given how highly sequenced the education major is and how soon you have to start into those courses to ensure that you meet all of the necessary requirements. Another thing I'll just add quickly is that we do have a, a, a professor who um, is very passionate about special education, David Hildreth, and he teaches classes on special education. So, um, you know, and he and, and all of our education teachers are connected with the schools and um, like Stephen's saying, getting people in into the, the places that would be a good fit for them. Okay, uh, the next question is for the 12 week three course, has there ever been a time where the classes have ended up at the same time? And if so, what would happen? Molly. So when it comes to picking your schedule for the three week, I'm sorry, the 12 weeks, there are gonna be a lot of different course offerings and some, some of them will be at the same time. And so that's why putting together your schedule is kind of like a puzzle. And so your guide will help make sure that your schedule makes sense so that you can actually go to all three of your classes. The system won't actually let you take two classes at the same time. An error will come up and it will say, in technological terms, you can't be in two places at once. Um, and so while there are classes that are offered at the same time, that's just part of the puzzle. And so if there's two classes you wanna take and they're both at the exact same time in that semester, you may have to only take one of them that semester, but then take the other one in a following semester. Um, so I think that answers the question, but if not, please feel free to, to follow up on it. Okay. Um, someone was asking if they are planning on being an art major, would they be able to take studio classes during their first semesters? And um, I'll take that one. Uh, my home department is the art department. I'm an art historian and I teach, um, I teach art history classes occasionally. Molly mentioned I teach Initiate also. Um, and the, yes, we, we like for art majors to um, begin taking uh, studio classes right from the start. And to widen the answer to this question, I, as an, an advising philosophy, I always encourage students to take a class that will you know be an area of their interest something they plan to do something they hope to do they should do something that they need to do they need to get some of their requirements taken care of and they should try something out so you know if you're you know you already think you want to be an art major um of course we would love to get you in those art classes um the same thing goes for everybody else on this call um, you should definitely be trying to take a class that's in your area, your intended area, because you might find out that it's really not what you thought it was. And that's good to know early on. Um, you wanna be working on your, on your requirements and you wanna be exploring something, right? So, and that's what your guide is, is, is there to help you do, to figure out how can you balance those needs and wants. And, um, but definitely, uh, yeah, studio classes, um, will be right there with you every semester, hopefully. Okay, next question, unless either of you have anything to add to that. Okay, um, how do you know if a major is right for you? Steven, I know it. Steven. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> I will say this. In my opinion, that's a hard question to answer in technical terms. Um, you know, obviously you come in with interests and it can be very difficult to place your interests. 
um, I will use myself as an example. Um, when I entered college, um, I entered as a landscape architecture major. Um, I thought that because I had, you know, some love and appreciation for the natural environment, I would figure out how to design it in eco-friendly ways. I sat in the first course, the instructor passed out the syllabus and started talking about all of this um, art equipment that I would need to purchase. And I said, absolutely not. Um, I didn't even finish the class. Um, I, I made it 20 minutes in, I got up, I went to the registrar's office and changed my major. <laughs> um, and I changed my major to political science. So I went from landscape architecture to political science, which seemingly have nothing to do with one another. Um, and I messed through political science for a while and decided in my personal opinion that it was not substantive in the way that I wanted it to be. So I changed my major again and I changed my major to history. Um, and that is where I stayed. It can be very difficult um, to get it figured out. Now, the course that I took, the path that I took is not one <laughs> that I recommend. Um, but what I did not have was a guide. Um, I did not have someone to sit with me and help me really mesh through uh, what my interests were. So to that question, I'm just going to uh, offer what I think is an obvious uh, shameless plug here. Come see us so, so that we can do the best that we can to try to help you mesh through those interests. I'm going to pass this question to Molly because I'm sure she has some, some more to add. No, I think everything you said um, is spot on. And I know we've talked about this, but I also changed my major and I changed mine halfway through college, which also is not like what I'm promoting, but just saying that it is possible and it's it's pretty normal to not know. I think that's a big narrative that we try to help change is that it's very normal, especially if you're coming right out of high school, 17, 18 years old to not know what you plan on doing for the rest of your life. Meaning it's okay if you don't know what major you're gonna have. Mm -hmm. But that's why we're here is to talk to you about the types of things that you like learning about. Like what are things that you hear about on TV and you can't stop thinking about? Maybe we can talk about what types of disciplines. And when I say that, I mean different types of academic departments might really focus in on the types of problems that you like to solve. Or maybe it will guide you because you read all these fiction books and you didn't realize that maybe you want to write fiction. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can take the things that you just naturally are interested in and turn that into a conversation about what your major might be. Um, and what I like to do is also talk to students about if they picture themselves in a career that is kind of something that you need a lot of skill and energy and learning how to do something like one directed thing, or if you want to have a more broad open concept of what your career could look like. And that also might help us pick a major that is either open with a lot of different career paths or a major that's a bit more um, prescribed towards one career. It's not easy, but that's why we're here, like Stephen said. Yeah, I think um, that is, a, you know, an ongoing journey that people have. And uh, another way to sort of to, to tell is to try things out, right? over time, um, you, take, you take one class and it seems great and then you take another class and it doesn't seem so great and you might go in a different direction and having a team of people who are ready to help, you know, Molly was saying earlier, there are things that, that as professionals, your guides might notice that you might not even notice our patterns or things that are happening. That happened to me when I was in school. I had a professor who told me, did you ever realize you were writing about photography and women a lot? And I hadn't noticed that. And that, you know, that'll happen in your classes too. Your faculty will help you in that way as well. Um, Okay, so the next question is, what if you want to take a summer course to transition from high school to college? And we are, so I learned, luckily I was in the info session last week. I think this question may have arisen in that info session, um, the Guilford Edge info session. And we are hoping to make um, our summer classes available to incoming students. And the admissions office can help you get started in that process if you're interested in doing that. Um, and we'll, um, you know, we'll follow up with you um, if, if that's something that, that you wanna pursue. So if other people are interested in that, that's something that we are hoping to make available for incoming students this summer to get, 
to get started. We don't have the same, um, we don't have the same limitations. We have we have maybe additional limitations um, currently with doing a lot of things virtually, but we also that also gives us some opportunities. Um, so we're um, we're hoping to make that possible for folks. Um, when can incoming first year students register for classes? And Molly has been working on that, so I know. Yeah. She so you should have received an email, and if you haven't, you'll probably be getting it very shortly from um, admissions about the Canvas site that I was talking about before. So in high school, you might have used Canvas or maybe used something else. I know there's a lot of different names out there, possibly Moodle, um, Blackboard, all different learning um, technologies that basically are places where you can learn from your class, your classes, your professors can hold Canvas sites. Well, we actually created one in Guided Discovery that's for pre-orientation, which means you can go on there and start learning about a lot of things that have to do with Guilford in your first year. And it's really important that you do go on there because we have um, a preference form. So your preference form is where you're gonna fill out the types of classes you're interested in, if you're more of a morning or an afternoon person, um, a lot of good questions so that your guide is gonna create your schedule. So for your first semester, your schedule is created for you and that's so we can make sure that you're getting into all of the types of classes that you need to start with. So we typically have students start in some level of an English class so that they can get started on the requirements to fulfill that. Like Catherine said, we put you in a class that you might need if you're in a major that has some early um, requirements. And then we put you in at least one that you're really just excited to try out. And that's all on the preference form. So you'll fill that out. And then when you come to orientation, which we'll follow up on details about that as soon as we can, you'll get your class schedule. Um, and that way you are aware of what your class schedule is like. You'll be able to kind of have your mindset wrapped around what it's gonna be like when you arrive in the fall. And then of course you can meet with your guide when you arrive um, to like go over your time management and if you have any issues. Yep. Okay. Um, next question. I'm tr Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, I'm trying to become a recreational therapist. What majors would that be? And would I get certification for that here? So, um, the answer to that question is, <laughs> I guess as interesting as the question itself, um, I will say this, there are a number of majors um, that can potentially be applied to a number of different types of professions. So um, when I hear students say, I wanna be a rec therapist, um, you might initially think, well, maybe I'll be a phys ed major. Um, maybe I will be um, pre-PT or pre-OT, uh, that's physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, or maybe I'll major in a hard science, maybe I'll major in biology or in chemistry or um, anything that any of us register conventionally as science. Um, typically, you may not say I would major in sociology and anthropology to become a rec therapist, or I will major in education or I'll major in psychology, um, but any of those majors could work as well. At the end of the day, um, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the education major. Um, any field of work that you're going into that's going to necessitate um, specific types of certification, you want to know now exactly what that certification is. Um, you also want to know whether or not that particular area of um, work is going to necessitate that you have a graduate degree, so a master's degree, or a um, professional degree. Um, and then, if so, for either of those degrees, a master's or professional degree, or for certification, whether or not there are um, particular types of classes uh, within a specific discipline you were supposed to take to be able to sit for um, the next set of classes or an exam to obtain the certification. Um, so all of that research uh, kind of needs to be done on the front end. Now, I could recommend uh, majors to you that I think would be good for you to take. Uh, or for you to, uh, to, choose, to choose on, to decide upon. Um, that is something I would probably do, or one of the, you know, maybe one of the academic guys would do. Uh, either, either side of the house could take care of a, a, a question like this. Uh, we would sit down with you early and really try to make sure that we're able to map out 
um, exactly the direction that you want to go. Um, because again, that recreational therapy is a, first of all, it's a really cool major. Um, but secondly, um, it can happen from a lot of different angles. Um, so what, what it comes down to is trying to determine um, which of your interests align most with a certain major. So when I sit down and I speak with you, I might learn that what you're more concerned about when it comes to rec therapy um, is not so much the hard science, but you might be concerned with where people's mindsets are as they're becoming more physically fit or as they're trying to restore their bodies after an accident or an injury. If that's the case, you might actually find yourself best suited for a psychology major. Um, but if you're more concerned with the, uh, the physiology and the anatomy of the body, then we might be looking at, you know, health sciences, you know, so we, we, we would need to have a more in-depth conversation to try to help you best determine um, the major that you should look at going into. Uh, you all could feel free to, to add more if there's more. That's great. I would just say, like Stephen, with anything that has a certification, there's always information about there from profession professional associations. So you could already start Googling what those types of certifications look like to become a rec therapist. And then, like Stephen said, having that in-depth conversation um, with a guide to figure out which major would best suit the needs of that certification. But yeah, Stephen, I think you covered it. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about the support team and the, you know, across campus. So there would be faculty members who would be able to help make determinations and help make connections and possibly even alumni that have gone into those fields that can also help. Stephen mentioned interning. Um, we also have a lot of students who job shadow. So, um, you know, part of what we would do in guided discovery is help to make connections for you um, not just with your coursework and the certifications that you would need, all that information is super important, but also making those connections, the networking that we, we talked about in the relationship building, which is also equally important in guided discovery. Um, okay, next question. Do you help students find jobs after graduation? Yeah, so um, we definitely do that. Um, I'm trying to find the, the best way to articulate it. I think that um, much like a, a parent, um, our goal is to make you self-sufficient um, in being able to uh, search out these types of opportunities um, because it might be the case that um, I may not be able to find it, but you might be sitting in your room one day and you might start browsing and you might find it. So if I've given you the necessary uh, resources and the tools or the strategies and the methods to help you uh, find the job, then I've done my job. So in that way, yes, we do help students find jobs. We, we walk a, a, a fine line there because I don't want to mislead anybody uh, into thinking I'm going to go out and find a job for you. Um, that's not a promise I can make. Uh, the promise that I can make is to be supportive in your efforts and again, uh, point you in the direction uh, of the necessary resources that you would need to search out those jobs. And there are a lot of them. Um, in fact, just yesterday, I compiled a list of probably 15 different job search engines. And then when you take those types of resources and you couple them with um, a resume critique, which we do all the time, we're currently in the process of doing resume critiques where students send in their resumes, and then we look over them and um, critique them, you know, uh, analyze them and, and then we send correspondence back to the students to let them know what they need to do to correct in the resume to, uh, to make it better. Um, we are in the process of helping students with the formation of cover letters um, as well as personal statements. Um, so all of those types of resources are what you need uh, to get your foot in the door with an employer. And we are with you the entire way helping you figure out those things um, so that you can find optimal employment. Yeah, and I'd say additionally, we have resources such as something called Handshake, which is an online platform that is specific to job postings and internship postings that the people who post them there know they're going to Guilford College. And so it's kind of like a, a one step above those other search engines, which those are great, like Stephen was saying. Um, career guides can really help you hone in on how to use those search engines. Um, and Handshake is just one additional tool that will show you some jobs and internships that people are posting them because they know Guilford College and some other college students are looking at them. Um, so like Stephen said, we do everything we can to put those types of resources in front of you and even just teach you how to use the process to your best advantage.
Okay, um, this, is a, this is an easy question. How do we go into guided discovery? So we have this wonderful app and it's, the app is called Navigate, right? On um, when you download it, Catherine. Um, and so we have all of our availability on there. So both career and academic guides put availability up. So students, if you download the app, there's something that says make appointment and you can go in and set up a time. There's also, as you might have seen on the screenshot of the newsletter, there's also drop-in hours that happen. And those are times that you don't necessarily need an appointment. If you just have a quick question and you just want to drop in, you can walk in, which we're located in Heggy Library. So it's a place that you'll become very familiar with. Um, so you'll walk in and you'll tell someone at the desk that you're there for your appointment if you scheduled one, and then you'll meet with your guide one-on-one, -on -one, or you'll walk in and say, hey, I saw there's some drop-in hours. Can I just ask this person the question? Um, we typically like appointments just because then we can really dedicate that time to you. Um, they're typically a half hour, but if you need more than one, you can always kind of double book. So make two back-to-back -back appointments. Um, and yeah, appointments are just really helpful so we can make sure that we dedicate that time to you. But there's almost always someone just kind of in the space ready to answer questions if you do need to, to stop in. So yeah, we're in the library, but we also are all around campus. So I've met with students in our little coffee shop. I've met students over lunch because they really wanted to get lunch in the cafeteria, but also didn't have time before their class. So we're pretty flexible, but our main location's in the library. And um, the email address is guided discovery at guilford.edu. So if you, like Molly was saying, if you have questions even now that you wanted to ask guided discovery, things that you weren't able to ask today, um, you can also contact my office. I'm in the provost's office and you can contact um, me at um, my email. You can find us easily on the website um, or you can um, contact us through our offices. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're here, so we, we would be happy to answer questions. Um, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to keep going. Um, if we could, should take another question. Um, are there any courses that are required for students to take? Yeah, so there are a few that are required um, specifically, and then there's a few general categories that have to be fulfilled and within those categories you get some choice. So some examples of classes that you have to do and that are required are the initiate and the reflection seminar classes that we've mentioned. So those sequence of classes that's part of the curriculum which means you have to have those classes to graduate. Um, and those are there for you to really build upon your experiences with all of your other classes and make sense of what you're learning. And so those are requirements. And then there's a few specifics um, in terms of our English program. So you have to go up to the English 102 level. Every student's a little bit different if you start at 101 or if you transferred in AP scores. So we could talk one-on-one -on -one about those specifics, but there are some classes like that that need to be fulfilled. But then what's really interesting is the categories. So like I mentioned, for instance, there's a category called social behavioral science. Now there's not one class that meets that requirement. There could be up to 20 classes that all meet that requirement. And it's up to you and your guide and your advisors along the way to help you pick which classes you wanna take to meet those requirements. Um, so every student's situation is a little bit different depending on maybe classes they've already taken in high school or um, what they're interested. So there are a few set of predetermined classes you need, but a majority of classes you are gonna have um, the choice up to you as long as you're meeting different requirements. And then every major is a little bit different as well. Yeah, one thing I would just add, there are, you know, Stephen mentioned I, liked bu I like buckets. And there are general education requirements called critical bases. And Molly was describing some of those, um, giving you some examples of the critical bases. And again, that's your foundational knowledge. That's the general education that we expect every student 
who graduates from Guilford to have as a basic liberal arts exposure to a breadth of knowledge, right? Some of those things will relate to your major and some of them will be supplemental to your major. Stephen mentioned that, you know, it, it's not just narrowly fo focusing, not narrowly um, preparing yourself, but exposing yourself to a wide range. And so the critical bases help to ensure that that happens. And there's lots of choices, Molly's saying, within how to, how to meet those requirements. And then once you decide a major, and uh, again, there's, you know, there's time to do that. Some students will come in knowing the major that they want. Some students will change their major 10 times and some students will take a little time to figure it out. But once you do have your major, there are requirements within that major that help you through that course of study and in that discipline to be prepared for what you will do after graduation. And then we have a really interesting new component of our curriculum called the Collaborative Quest. And the Initiate class and the Reflection Seminars that we've been talking about are part of that Collaborative Quest. It will end with a capstone project that is your own interest. It's something that you are excited about doing. And you will design a, a sequence of courses that will prepare you to do that capstone project. Basically, the way I think about it is it's the thing that you want to take with you when you graduate. We're gonna tell you all these other things you need, right? This, this foundations of knowledge, this disciplinary training, and then what do you wanna learn? And we can help you figure that out again in consultation with your guide and consultation with faculty and got in consultation with other students. Um, and so we're really excited about that. That's a, um, that's a kind of newer feature um, as part of your, your Guilford um, education. Um, so I um, am prompted to ask you if you have any last questions. Um, there aren't any that are, um, that are in the queue, but if you have any last questions, I don't know, Stephen or Molly, do you have any last comments you wanted to make? as we're waiting thanks to for, see if any more questions come in. Yeah, just thanks for joining tonight. Um, and I hope you've taken away from this that we're here to support you. And even if you don't know what questions you have, sometimes just introducing yourself and saying hi um, can bring up some really good conversations. So whether it's via email right now or when we hopefully see you on campus, um, feel free to say hi. I know my favorite thing about working with students is even if we only see each other once a semester because that's all they want to talk to me in a meeting format seeing them around campus and saying hi to each other is is definitely one of my favorite parts so don't be a stranger when you see us Stephen, um, any last words famous last words yeah i just want to say that um you know one of the things that's uh very unique um in your or will be very unique in your guilford experience is how close knit and how, how small the institution is. Um, a lot of people look at that and think that it's negative, um, but there's actually a great deal of benefit that comes with being in a space um, that is smaller. Um, you have the opportunity to develop personal relationships um, in a way that you don't necessarily have at much larger institutions. And this program in particular um, is literally customized to ensure that at no point in time you are lacking support. Um, if I think back to my own college experience and one of the things that I wish that I had, it was regular access to an advisor who actually knew my name <laughs> and could tell me what to do um, or have conversations with me. Um, for a lot of us, our advisor uh, relationships were, we're gonna try to track you down at some point in time during the week, we might find you, we may not, we're gonna snag a pin number and, and get out of office, in and out of office in two or three minutes. Um, but you have the opportunity to come in and with any of the 12 of us, as well as people from across the campus, really foster um, very ingrained relationships. Um, and I can't express enough how beneficial that is to you, even if you don't quite realize it just yet. So I just want to encourage you even before your arrival uh, to utilize Guided Discovery as well as the other campus entities um, as much as possible. And just let you know that we're excited about you coming. Um, we don't have any additional questions, but I'll just follow up uh, by also thanking you um, for taking the time to join us. We are happy to take questions moving forward through email. Um, 
or you know other ways. And uh, Stephen's comments really remind me of my favorite things about this program and my favorite things about Guilford, and that's the people. Um, it's a very special place, and um, Guided Discovery is a very special team. They are just wonderful co colleagues to each other, and they are very driven by their support for students. Um, they love their jobs. They're really passionate about what they do, and they're excited to meet all of you and to, to get to know you and to welcome you to Guilford and help you answer the questions, like Molly said, the questions you don't even know you have. So um, again, thanks so much uh, for your time, and um, we really do appreciate it. <laughs>